Welcome to Auto Chatter. Today I'll be discussing the Pontiac Aztec and the similar Buick Rendezvous. The Aztec, being a practical yet unfortunately styled vehicle, is worth chatting about. So is Buick's first post-Great Depression light truck. As always, facts, opinions, and speculation will be given. Please give a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. How do two similar vehicles manage to fare so much differently? Let's find out. General Motors in the 90s was taking note the Gen Xers were gravitating rapidly to vehicles like the Toyota RAV4 and Honda CRV. These station wagons with a lift kit had a stance and ride height people liked, but didn't have the high price and low gas mileage traditional SUVs had. So naturally it made sense for GM to have a, one of their own too. But it had to be cool, because Gen Xers didn't want to drive a caravan. That's what they got lugged around in when they were kids in the 1980s. Initial concepts of the ultimate Gen X magnet was taking aspects of a Chevy Camaro and Blazer with a truck brace frame and four-wheel drive. It sounded like a cool idea, but GM took on more of a design-by-committee approach with this new vehicle instead. GM did unveil an Aztec concept in 1999, and it had potential, but budget constraints and focus groups would dictate what we would eventually get. The platform chosen was the same one designed for GM's minivans in the 1990s because it would be cheaper and not a poor mile per gallon truck based one. The short wheelbase version of the Chevy Venture and its clones from some of the other divisions including Pontiac with the Transport Montana was used. This decision alone is why the proportions on an Aztec come across as odd. It forced a raised cowl and the roof, along with narrowing the body and using smaller minivan type wheels. The minivan hating Gen Xers are going to love this. Focus groups were brought in and were not impressed with how it looked. But it's like the decision makers at GM ignored them. They were packing this thing with every outdoor lifestyle centric gizmo they could think of in the dimensions of an automobile. Who would buy a Nissan Xterra? when they would see what this thing has all inside. The Aztec uh, would have a tent kit available. The center console doubled as a removable cooler. Radio control switches were in the trunk area for tailgating. Speaking of tailgating, the lower part of the hatch could be used as two seats with integrated cup holders. You could get a slide out storage tray for the back too. This vehicle was a 4,000 pound Swiss Army knife. So it had some neat features, but it had some big drawbacks too. The elephant in the room obviously is the styling. The minivan roots, as I mentioned earlier, dictated some odd proportions. The front end was busy and weird with the twin snout grille. The two-piece back hatch glass meant every time you looked in the rearview mirror you got to see that separation. Even worse, they thought three-spoke alloy wheels, or the standard hubcaps that also look like three spokes, were sexy. To top it all off, the bottom of the vehicle was covered with unpainted, ugly plastic. Under the hood, didn't get much better. You got the Chevy Venture Vans 3.4 liter, 185 horsepower V6, and a 4-speed automatic. All-wheel drive was available, otherwise it was front-wheel drive. Given its weight, uh, these were not quick vehicles. The gimmick-laden interior was chock full of the cheap GM plastics that General Motors unfortunately was known for at that point in time. So how much uh, for the Aztec? It started around $21,500 in 2001 when it launched. That's about $36,000 today. The fancier all-wheel drive GT version was almost $27,000. That's $45,000 now. I think it was priced a bit high, as a Toyota RAV4 started around $16,500 then, and a Nissan Xterra was around $18,000. But Pontiac is stoked, and the vehicle launched. 
they had an official unveiling with a large group of paid people on stage cheering and holding signs praising this thing. Examples of what some of the signs said include Aztec 185 horsepower and it's the versatility baby. The presenter even jumped into the fray crowd surfing. <laughs> so extreme. The event looked about as realistic as a Disney Channel kids sitcom. I remember the first season of the reality show Survivor. Pontiac sponsored it and the winner of the show got an Aztec. I'm sure he or she was thrilled. Sales projections were about 75000 annually. The first year, they only hit about 27000 The three-spoke wheel design and the ugly unpainted lower cladding was panned so badly. They were both gone by 2002. The cladding is still there in later years. They just painted it, which helped. Psst, Subaru. Take note. The wheel style changed helped too. Maybe they thought having all the unpainted plastic made it look less like a Chevy Venture that the guys from the show Pimp My Ride got hold of. These changes were enough to convince about 800 more people in 2002 to buy one, with sales of about 27800 Pontiac also lowered the sticker price for the 2002s, about 1300 bucks from the 01s. This was Aztec's best year ever, and moving 30000 annual was necessary to at least break even on it. 2003 moved about 27300 of them, which still isn't good. 2004 then says hold my beer with about 20500 sold. The final year was 2005 and only about 5,000 sold. GM was throwing around some serious rebate money during Aztec's years, and it still didn't help with this mobile Swiss Army knife. Nissan effectively targeted the outdoor lifestyle enthusiasts with a vehicle you could actually take off-road with the Xterra. It was more authentic, purpose-built vehicle without the gimmicks and uh, at a similar price point. Toyota and Honda got the thrifty and affordable crossover formula right with the RAV4 and the CRV. Today, the CRV and RAV4 are both companies' best selling vehicles in the US. Anyway, Pontiac replaced the Aztec with a rebad Chevy Equinox called a Torrent, which sold from 2006 to the 09 model year. It was a pretty forgettable, and sometimes uh, less is more, as it actually fared better the first few years it was out versus the Aztec. But when word got out Pontiac was dying, torrent sales withered away. The Aztec did have a cousin, and it was a lot more successful. The Buick Rendezvous was uh, Buick's first truck since 1923. It was built at the same assembly plant as the Aztec, if you stare at it long enough, you can see the family resemblance, but the Buick version avoided enough of the weird design cues to come across as more desirable. It didn't offer a tent kit, but you could get options like a third row seat, heads up display, and other luxuries. Buick marketed it as a very nice but more affordable alternative to vehicles like the Acura MDX and the Lexus RX 300. When launched for 2002, a base rendezvous had an MSRP of around $25,000, which is about $41,000 today. That's about $9,000 less than the, what the Acura and Lexus competitors started at, even if it was almost $4,000 more than an Aztec. Buick was not trying to target the same crowd Pontiac was. It initially had the same 3.4 liter V6 as the Aztec, but larger and more powerful V6s became standard and optional later. Sales of the Rendezvous in 2002 was about 32,000 its first model year, but climbed into the 60s and even low 70s annually until tapering off in 2007, its last one. The car didn't really die as its replacement was renamed the Enclave and it is still available today. The Buick Rendezvous did a lot to help the Buick brand as they had image problems then, not too far removed from what ultimately killed Oldsmobile. The Rendezvous was successful in getting people 
who before would never even consider a Buick, to buy one. These are called conquest sales as opposed to relying on your loyal fan base. Today, every Buick can trace its roots to the rendezvous in a way, as their entire lineup is crossovers. The same can't be said of Pontiac. The Aztec was a huge flop, and some say it was a big nail in the coffin for the division. Five years after the Aztec was axed, Pontiac was gone too. Oddly today, people seem to not throw so much shade towards the Aztec. Is it so weird that it's cool now? Uh, are there just a ton of Breaking Bad fans propping it up? Who knows? This has been my Aztec chatter with a side of rendezvous. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you. Chatter out.